Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Trucker Jim channel. Coming to you from the Keep On Trucking Studios today. And I'm going to be giving a recommendation for a movie. If you hadn't seen it, put this on your list. If you have seen it, you may want to watch it again. It's an oldie, but boy is it a goodie. It's from 1993, True Romance. Now, just to give you a little info on this movie, the screenplay, the script for this, was written by none other than Quentin Tarantino. This was his first script that he sold that got turned into a major motion picture. Now, he did not direct this movie. It was directed by Tony Scott. Uh, you're familiar with some of his work. He was the director of Top Gun. I'm gonna send you up against the best. Yes, sir. You two characters are going to Top Gun. I feel the need. The need. <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop 2, which is one of the rare occasions where the sequel was better than the original. True Romance has an absolute all-star cast, but most of these weren't big stars prior to this movie. Christian Slater is your main character. He plays Clarence. Patricia Arquette in my favorite Patricia Arquette role of all time as Alabama. But there's big stars like Val Kilmer playing the ghost of Elvis, Dennis Hopper playing Clarence's dad, Brad Pitt playing a stoner. Spoiler alert, he never gets off the couch the entire movie. Hi. Right. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. You dick? No. Dick no, he's not here right now. You live here? Yes, I do. He is sort of uh, roommates? Exactly, my Yeah, well, maybe you can help me. I'm looking for a friend sure. of mine. Clarence Worley from Detroit. He's traveling with a real pretty girl named Alabama. Uh, yeah, man, I know her. Now, True Romance starts out in dirty-ass Detroit. First person you're going to meet is Clarence. Works at a comic book store, bit of a loner, really knows his pop culture, which uh, that's classic Quentin Tarantino script writing. So one day, she meets this John Holmes motherfucker, and it's like, whoa, baby. I mean, this cat is like Charles Bronson in the Great Escape. He's digging tunnels. Right, and she's getting a serious dig at you. And she's feeling something. She ain't feeling something. Pain. Pain. Chew. Toby, chew. It hurts. It hurts her. It shouldn't hurt. You know, her pussy should be bubbling up by now. But when this cat fucks her, it hurts. It hurts just like it did the first time. You see, the pain is reminding the fuck machine what it was once like to be a virgin. Hence, like a virgin. But he's at a bar practicing his pickup lines on this skank. Same skank that was in The Crow. I always said, if I had to fuck a guy. No, I mean, I had to. If my life depended on it, I'd fuck Elvis. I'd fuck Elvis. <laughs> Really? Well, honey was alive, not now. <laughs> Never thought to use that pickup line. But then next scene we find Clarence in the movie theater watching his Sonny Chiba Kung Fu flicks. And in waltz this sexy blonde with a big old bucket of popcorn. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? It's about 12. Suppose you gotta get up early, huh? No, not particularly. How come? It's just after I see a movie, I like to go get a piece of pie and talk about it. It's sort of a little tradition I have. Do you like to get pie after you see a good movie? Okay, before we go any further, this is not a movie I'm recommending for your kids. This is an R rated movie for multiple reasons. Absolutely the language. It was written by Quentin Tarantino. There is some sexual content. There's even a quick shot of Patricia Arquette's nipple. Yeah. Um, it's a good sex scene. The, the energy that's shown in this movie, the chemistry between these two, it, it's one of my favorite in films. Because you find out she's a call girl. Beautiful, beautiful scene. There's a lot of scenes I really like between these two in this movie. The scene on the sidewalk, 
after the movie theater when Alabama tells Clarence that she likes to go get pie after a movie and ask him if he'd like to. Very cool. In the diner scene while they're having their pie and Clarence has a few questions for Alabama. Then he takes her to his, his comic book store that, that he works in and then that sex scenes come. But Clarence wakes up and finds Alabama not there. He, you know, lives in dirty ass Detroit and his apartment has like a fire escape and there's a billboard of a Jeep Cherokee from 1993 and Alabama's out there smoking a cigarette and she's crying. Absolute touching scene, but when Alabama comes clean about being a call girl, tells Clarence that she feels goofy, but she's in love with him after only one night. Next scene after that, they're walking out of the courthouse and they are husband and wife. Everything is great, but something's bothering Clarence. So he goes to the bathroom. Now this isn't credited in the movie as the ghost of Elvis, but I'm not sure what else you would call it or his imaginary Elvis friend, but the fact that there is a pimp. I thought I'd get away with it. Get away with it? Killing's a hard part. Getting away with it? It's easy. You think a cop gives a fuck about a pimp? Listen, every pimp in the world gets shot. Two in the back of the fucking head. Cops throw a party, man. So after his little chat with Elvis, he decides the pimp's got to die. He gets the address from Alabama, says he's going to go get her things because there's no need she shouldn't have her things. So he goes down to what looks like downtown dirty Detroit. He was asking about Alabama. Who the fuck is that bitch? She's with me. Who the fuck are you? I'm her husband. Yeah. Well, that makes us practically related. <laughs> Gary Oldman was absolutely awesome in this as Drexel. But Clarence's encounter with Drexel, which ends in Drexel and Marty being dead and a bunch of hookers spread out in every direction. Well, Clarence left with a suitcase that he thought was Alabama's things. <laughs> Killed her. I'm a hammer or something I'm fucking starving to death. Is this a joke? No joke. Hmm. No, it's probably the best goddamn fucking hamburger I've ever had in my entire life. I've never had a hamburger taste this good. Oh. I'm gonna eat something to feel better. I think what you did was What? I think what you did What? Was so romantic. Baby, you're bleeding. I got your things right here. Clean <laughs> now Clarence's father, which he hadn't seen in years, played by Dennis Hopper, he used to be a cop, he's some kind of security guard now, whatever, he has a big Rottweiler. They go over there to pay him a visit, he introduces Alabama as his new wife. You still have friends on the force? Yes, I still have friends on the force. Well then could you just find out if they know anything about us? I don't think they know shit, but I don't want to think, I want to know for sure. I mean, you could do that, right? What makes you think that I could do that? Because you were a cop. But what makes you think that I would do that? Because I'm your son. Oh, you're my son. Oh, you got it. Huh? All worked out, don't you, huh? Oh, yeah. Look, I mean, goddamn, I have never asked you for a goddamn thing, huh? Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, after mom divorced you, did I ever ask you for anything? No, I didn't. When I wouldn't see you for a year and a half to two years, did I ever get your shit about it? And that whole fucking time you were drunk, did I ever get mad and point my finger at you? No, I never did. Everybody else did, but I didn't. Now look, I just need help, and you can fucking help me, all right? I'm basically a pretty resourceful guy. If I didn't really need it, I wouldn't ask. Like, 
I mean, if you want to say no, then fine. Forget it. Don't worry about it. No problem. I'm going. All right? The forager's back! Thank God, I could eat a horse or slept with a ketchup on it. I didn't get you any chicken. Well, how come? Honey, it's too early in the morning. It's only 9 o'clock. But Dennis Hopper makes a few phone calls about the case. They think it's drug related because Drexel was like in business with Lou Boyle, played by Christopher Walken. Which Christopher Walken's scene with Dennis Hopper, known as the Sicilian story, may be the most famous scene out of all in this great movie. Now, some may find it a little racist. Sicilians were like uh, wops from northern Italy. Uh, they all have blonde hair and blue eyes. But, uh, well, then the Moors moved in there and, uh, well, they changed the whole country. They did so much fucking with Sicilian women, huh? That they changed the whole bloodline forever. That's why blonde hair and blue eyes became black hair and dark skin. But when Clarence thinks everything's cool, he heads to L.A. He's got a friend of his that's an actor, probably knows some people. He's wanting to unload his suitcase full of cocaine, and then him and Alabama head to Mexico to just live the dream. <laughs> In movies, it never quite goes like that. I don't want to give the whole movie away, but there's uh, another scene that'll definitely be memorable. That's when Tony Soprano before he was Tony Soprano, is in their hotel room. Clarence is not there. It's just Alabama. It gets brutal. You are unbelievably cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Let me see those eyes. What a face. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor. Turn around for me. Okay. Like, you know, no, go the other way. Okay. I told you guys it was an R rating, but if you haven't seen True Romance, definitely put it on your list. It may not be the easiest movie to find. It was made in 1993. It's not on Netflix. I did find it on Roku TV. You can find clips of it on YouTube and rent it. But if you get a chance, I think you'll really enjoy the movie. If you've seen it already, want to let us know what you thought about True Romance or scenes you like the most, just leave a comment below. If you enjoy this type of content, movie reviews from Trucker Jim, give a thumbs up and uh, maybe I'll do some more. But True Romance is one of my favorite movies. But until next time, everyone please be safe out there and keep on trucking. I kept asking Clarence. Why our world seemed to be collapsing and everything seemed so shitty. And he'd say, that's the way it goes. But don't forget, it goes the other way too. <laughs>